My name is Commander Michael Pazon, Commanding Officer of the USS Maryland. And I'm Lieutenant Commander Josh McCright, the Executive Officer on board. Hi, I'm Master Chief Dan Bello. I'm the Chief of the Boat. We are proud to be serving aboard the USS Maryland. Here is a short video that will show you a little bit about the Navy's most advanced and powerful weapons platform, a ballistic missile submarine. Enjoy the video and enjoy the virtual fleet week. Hello, my name is Captain Hans Foster. Today I'm going to take you on a tour of a 726 class submarine control room and the ship control team trainer. All right, so the ship's control party is made up of four individuals. Uh, the individual you see here with the look of concentration on his face is the, is the helm and the, and the Fairwater planes. His primary uh, job is to maintain uh, the ship's depth and the ship's heading under the supervision of the officer deck. Uh, to his left, you will see the diving officer of the watch, who is the senior watch stander, who's there to make sure the ship reaches and maintains order depth. As you can imagine, it's rather complicated keeping an 18,000 ton submarine on exactly the depth you want. We, can, we will keep it plus or minus a foot when we need to. To the left, you have the stern plainsman who controls the ship's angle, and at high speeds, he will also control the ship's uh, depth, because the faster you go, the, the more effective the planes are. And then all the way to the left is the chief of the watch, who is there to maintain all of the ship's ballast systems. And he also, you can see, he's got all the procedures out there in front of him because everything's done by the book. So he's following along in the procedures and making sure that the ship's uh, control team is, is maintaining things exactly as ordered by the officer deck, who you can't see because he's off camera, because uh, control is actually quite a large space. Uh, but the officer deck is primarily in charge of making sure that everybody does everything exactly by the book. If you come to join the submarine force, this would be one of the first watches you would stand. That covers the ship's control party and the ship's control team trainer. Enjoy the rest of your virtual tour. Hi, I'm Culinary Specialist Submarines First Class Adelico Duran, and I'm gonna take you on a tour of the mess decks and a bunk room. Uh, this right here is the mess decks. This is actually where the magic happens on board. This is where meals happen, training, movies, uh, anything you can think of that involves large groups. It's the largest single space on the boat where people can gather. They have stepped up their sanitation game by adding plexiglass and ensuring that people have a safe eating environment. If you want good desserts, then you want to be on a submarine. We've got the best desserts in the Navy, hands down. So this person here is an FSA. He uh, is in charge of all sanitation of pots and pans, silverware, cups, and anything that comes out of the galley. Uh, they're generally responsible for cleaning up cruise mess and the overall sanitation of the crew, which is an incredibly important part of submarine life, especially when you live so close together. Typically, you'll spend anywhere between 30 to 90 days as an FSA when you first report on board. Then from there, you'll go off to your division and do great things. But until then, your co the cooks are your first family, and it also gives you a chance to interact with the crew because you'll see them three times a day for every meal. So the bunk room is the living quarters for the crew. This is where we spend our time sleeping and getting ready for watch. Uh, typically, it's nine guys to a space, and in that space, it's usually always dark due to the fact that somebody is always sleeping. So you have to get ready in the dark, get undressed, get dressed, um, get all your shower supplies. Everything has to usually be in the dark. Even though I'm only 5'3", I prefer the top rack. It is extremely hard to get in and out of, but Anytime you feel rocking, that's where you feel it the hardest, so I definitely love the top rack. I remember my first night on board was actually pretty comforting because you can feel the boat rocking back and forth, put me right to sleep. So typically there are three shifts on a submarine, so when people are getting ready, it's not everybody all at once. It's always dark, and it's maybe like one or two people in the bunk room will be getting ready or getting ready for bed at one time. Thank you for letting me show you around. Enjoy the rest of your tour. Hi, I am Chief Torpedoman's mate Tim Hanley and I've been in the Navy for 16 years. Today I'm gonna to take you on a tour of a torpedo room inside an Ohio class ballistic missile submarine. So what you're looking at here is the torpedo tube rammer and uh, what that does is it attaches to the back of the weapon and that's a primary method 
for uh, pushing the torpedo in the tube or pulling it out of the tube when they're um, loading the weapon for launch. So what you're seeing on the screen now is uh, part of the torpedo loading system and that was the rammer and the pivot tray. Uh, that is the primary method used to tube load and unload the torpedoes into the tube when uh, making preparations to launch. Uh, the brass things on the track are called dollies. That's what the lashing straps attach to to tie down the weapon to prevent it from moving while the ship moves through the water. So when shipping a torpedo on board an Ohio-class ballistic missile submarine, the weapon will start on the pier brought down by the weapons facility and will pick it up using a crane and it starts out horizontally and they use pendants and lifting mechanisms to bring it vertical and then lower it down through four levels into the torpedo room where they bring it down horizontal and then strap it down into the dollies and lashing straps in the torpedo room. So what you're seeing on the screen now is the Defensive Weapons Launch Console or the DWLC. The DWLC's purpose is to control and manipulate any of the hydraulic, electrical, or pneumatic valves associated with the torpedo tubes. When launching a weapon or loading a weapon, there'll be one torpedo man stationed at the DWLC and his job is to ensure that when ordered, they flood and equalize the torpedo tube so that way the muzzle door can be opened and it's equalized with sea pressure. Once the torpedo is tube loaded and all the cables are connected, they, they will flood and equalize the tube and then turn control of the weapon over to the team in the attack center up in the control room. And once the attack center and the fire controlmen have their solution, they will be the ones to actually launch the weapon. And that concludes our tour of the Torpedo Room on an Ohio-class ballistic missile submarine. I hope you enjoyed the tour. Hi, I'm Senior Chief Missile Technician Adam Schumacher, and today I'm going to take you on a tour of Missile Control Center. So this is Missile Control Center. This is one of the only areas on the boat where there are two watch standers constantly in there 24-7, every day, 365 days a year, including Christmas. We have the launcher supervisor, He's kind of the muscles of the operation. Uh, launcher is what monitors hydraulics, pneumatics, high pressure air, nitrogen. Uh, it controls opening the hatches, shutting the hatches. Everything about the tube that houses the missile is controlled and watched through launcher. He's also the senior missile technician on watch. So he's responsible for five different watch standards. He's the guy that uh, we've had proved that he knows what he's doing. He has all the technical competence. He's proven to us that he has the maturity and responsibility to stand one of the most important watches on the submarine really the muscles of the operation. Then you have fire control. As you can see here, fire control supervisor on the bottom left, he is the guy that's kind of the brains of the operation. So if you have the missile tube that's housing the missiles, you have the missiles themselves. They have guidance systems inside of them. That's how we send targeting to them. Uh, the fire control supervisor monitors everything involving the missiles themselves. That's the one way that the system can actually communicate into the guidance systems, into the missiles themselves, and that's what actually allows us to be able to uh, prepare and launch missiles if directed by the President of the United States. Command will send a message uh, that gets sent to the boat and decoded by two officers, and that'll tell us whether or not we have the uh, correct orders in order to launch a, a weapon. Uh, those officers will come down to MCC and they go to the CIP key safes. Uh, if you've ever seen Crimson Tide or any submarine movie where there's a key that gets brought around to the captain and it's this special key, that's the CIP key that gets brought to the captain. He uses that in control and puts it into the captain's indicator panel, and when he turns the key to tactical, it's what completes the circuit for the system in order for us to launch nuclear weapons. Uh, there's also the weapons control officer safe, uh, which is located in between both of the launcher console and fire control console, and only the weapons officer has that combination on board. Uh, we also have a firing unit key which arms the firing units on top of gas generators, and that's what pr creates pressure to launch the missiles out of the tubes. Those are 130,000 pound missiles uh, instantly disappearing. Uh, the other really key factor of the CIP key is that nobody on board has that combination. In order for us to understand that the President of the United States has actually asked us to launch weapons, uh, that's one of the final things we do is we get that combination in a message, it gets decoded, the two officers go down and put it in the safe, and when the safe opens up, that's the proof to us that it is an actual authorized launch from the President of the United States. And that, friends, is Missile Control Center. I hope you've enjoyed your tour today and learning about some of the like, best part of the United States government, in my opinion, which is nuclear weapons and how some of the greatest American uh, heroes of today are maintaining your safety, uh, sometimes while you're sleeping at home, uh, not even aware that there's sailors out there cruising the depths of the ocean.